In this video, I'll take a look at motivated light and show you what it is and how it can improve your portraits. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. And in this video, I'm going to have a look at motivated light. Now, motivated light, it's a term that comes from the world of cinematography rather than stills photography, and yet the principles are relevant to both genres. So to find out more about motivated light, I think what we need to do, let's get a light set, let's get a model in, let's get shooting. So to help me out today, I've got the amazing Sophie. Sophie's gonna be the model for this shoot, and what you'll notice is just off to the side is a rather large lantern, and inside of that is a candle that's actually a light. But what you'll also notice is it's not a particularly bright light, certainly not compared to the ambient light in the room. I'm going to take a photo with that in the scene. Here we go, Sophie. The candle in the shot is what's known as a practical light. It's a real light source actually doing something in your shot. But honestly, it's not doing very much at all. And that's where we can transform this into a motivated light by taking the same idea and really enhancing it. Now to motivate that light, I'm actually gonna do a couple of things. The first one is work out the general room exposure that I want to record. So with my camera, I've gone for manual mode. I've dialed in some settings that I think will slightly underexpose the room, the ambient light. Okay, Sophie, here we go. Yeah, that looks great. I've taken the candle out the lantern and Sophie looks a little bit underexposed. So for my motivated light, I need something far brighter than the candle. So I've got an Explore 300. Now this is a flash for stills photography, which is what I will be doing, but you could also use it for video as an LED light. I'm gonna put that inside the lantern exactly where the candle would be and take the same shot. Okay, Sophie, here we go. That's great. And straight away, you can see that that works really well. I now have that dark feeling that I got from underexposing the background, but the light coming out of the lantern really does look like light coming out of a lantern. Except, of course, it's much, much brighter than the candle would have been. Okay, so that light is set. Let's take a few pictures like this. Sophie, are you ready? Okay, here we go. If you want to get nice and close to the lantern for me, that would be great. Meaning it. Terrific. So this time what I've done is I've taken a speed light and I've put it inside of a small lantern. And I'm going to give this to Sophie to hold. Now that's going to be a practical light. It's a light that's actually in the shot. And I'm going to use it to actually light Sophie as well. So Sophie, if you'd like to hold that up. Now obviously if I was shooting video, I'd have a candle or an LED continuous light in the lantern. But because I'm shooting stills, I've got a very small speed light in there. It works okay, except when you look at it, the brightest point in this picture is actually the light coming out from the lantern. And of course that's exactly how it should be in reality. But this isn't reality, this is light that we're creating. So I'm gonna motivate that light by creating an artificial representation of that light. And I'm gonna do it with a second flash. So this is gonna be my extra light. And using a second light has a couple of advantages. The first one is it gives me that extra level of control and it's a bigger light source. So in theory, it's a more softer light source. So it should look a bit more flattering on Sophie. Let's take a test shot. But first of all, I'm actually gonna turn this one off and just set the light for the practical light, the real light in the lantern. So at the moment it's quite bright. So what I'm actually gonna do is turn that lantern light down. So it's no longer the brightest thing in the scene. So you can see the light in the lantern, but it's no longer strong enough to really light Sophie's face. 
So now I've turned on my second light and I'm going to show you why this is the wrong place for it. Okay, let's take a little shot like this. Here we go, Sophie. So at first glance, these pictures look great. There's light in the lantern, it's not too bright. There's light on Sophie and it's nice and soft. But what direction is that light coming from? Well, it's not coming from the lantern and that's where it looks wrong. If this was a motivated light from that lantern, it should be on the other side. So the solution is pretty easy. Just put the light on the same side as the lantern. So let's pop it over there. Okay. And we'll do that once again. Now remember, if your original light, the practical light, has a strong colour cast, then your new motivated light might also need to be gelled to keep the look and feel consistent. And of course, when it comes to motivated light, it doesn't have to be a lantern or a light. It can be the natural daylight. It can be a window or a door light, or in this case, a roof light way up there in the ceiling. So that's the look I want to simulate. But let's show you why I need to, first of all, by taking just the, a natural light photo. OK, Sophie, here we go. So if I let the camera do its own thing, no flash, just using the ambient light, the, the lighting is OK. I mean, it's completely blown out in the roof light and it just doesn't have much atmosphere. So I'm going to get some atmosphere in this scene by underexposing the ambient light. So let's deliberately underexpose the scene. See how this looks. And when I do that, you can see that there is now some detail in that window light, but everything else in the room, including Sophie, is really underexposed. And that's where our motivated light's gonna really help. So what I've done is I've got a flash up in the softbox. Sam's holding it way up where the, the window light is. I'm using a grid on the softbox this time just to give me some direction to the light so it doesn't spread all around the room like the natural light does. That's going to help me get some control and style and drama into this scene. OK, Sophie, let's try this. And for some real control, I've added the background light in just to throw a little wash of light around the curve of this yurt. So there you go, motivated light is simply a light that's in your scene, but you've increased its ability to light your scene. It's a really simple technique, whether you're a film photographer or a stills photographer. Now, if you've enjoyed this video or you've got any questions, leave me a comment below. Click on the bell icon for regular notifications of all the brand new videos right here on Adorama TV. And of course, don't forget to click on that subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.